Okay, we're at Breitbart.com, and I'm going to cover this more after the break, but uh, here's the article. Panetta, international permission, Trump's congressional permission for military actions. Actually, that's, I'm not criticizing Breitbart's site, but that's, that's, that's not even as bad as the quotes are. They say Congress has nothing to do with it, and it's international permission is where they get the authority. They said Obama's saying I'm a dictator. He says the U.N.'s my boss. Now, there are 850 comments on this, and there's similar comments at Infowars.com, but we're crawling with COINTELPRO and people you know, trying to cause infighting. Uh, but uh, here it is. 850 comments. During breaks, I've gone through about 100 of these, almost every one of them. If you scroll down a little bit there. Says, Panetta needs to be arrested immediately. He has breached his responsibility to our Constitution and is a direct threat to the nation as any terrorist. This man is a criminal. Death to tyrants. That's an old saying going back to Rome and the Founding Fathers. So are the rest of his administration. The entire administration is a bunch of traitors and enemies of this country. I'm reading you quotes here. How about our military that just sits there and lets us poor Americans pay and watch our Constitution go up in flames? How about you get up and speak out? I guess you are. I cannot believe that I'm reading this. For the record, I'm an active duty officer. Look at this. Number one, Leon Panetta was telling the senior senator, a senator, that Congress has absolutely no voice. That's right. See, the headline's wrong. We don't need an article saying. They tell him, you have no voice. That's what they say. This officer gets what they say. It's just unbelievable. They're not even playing patty cake with the little idiot senators anymore who've been already engaged in treason. They're all involved, too. What do they expect's going to happen? Where do they think this road leads? <sighs> Uh, senators were actually having to catch their breath. This is so amazing, and it's not even a news issue. <clears throat> well, number one, Leon Panetta was telling the senator that Congress has absolutely no voice in the president choosing to go to war. Congress has a voice in sustaining a war, not initiating one. Point being, the Barack Obama can choose just like Bush to go to war without congressional approval. See, this poor officer doesn't understand that that wasn't even before. That was how they told them all that. Congress has to direct it. Now, Congress passed laws that if we were attacked, suddenly the president could respond in those circumstances. But that's still congressional control. If we are to stay in active combat over a period of time, I believe 90 days, Congress has to approve further operations. Yeah, that's the War Powers Act. This is important as Leon Panetta is the president's liaison for combat. If Leon Panetta says we need to unilaterally go to war with Syria, Obama can say go. Mr. Sessions doesn't get a say, at least not at first. And then it goes on. So the military, that person's not fully understanding it. Congress did give Bush approval for both Iraq and Afghanistan. Look it up. So now they're explaining that. And they did. But it wasn't a proper declaration. People argued, well, now they won't even get an authorization. Now that's happening. And then it goes on here with uh, people saying, you know, the Constitution's being shredded before our eyes. It goes on to say the top brass of the military are just as corrupt as anyone in politics. It's all about power and prestige, and most anyone above the rank of 08 looks only into ensuring their retirement and future in government. And it just goes on here. So forever they've tried to train people that, oh, you know, the president can launch a war without congressional approval, which is total treason. Now they're saying, oh, he gets it from the U.N., Read the Constitution. That's why whenever America was attacked in the past, you had to get a declaration of war. But then Korea, Vietnam, right through, it just became Gulf of Tonkin resolutions. A resolution of force. And then the power started drifting to the president. And the globalist always wanted that so the president could be a foreign puppet and engaged in puppeteering our military. And this is it. So now they're going to teach the military, not only does the president launch wars without Congress, well, then why is there even a Congress? Now it's the president launches it because the U.N.'s our boss. And you're going to see the military come out, the brass, and say, that's right. We just saw it in Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, I struggle for the proper word to describe what's happening. If you just joined us, uh, multiple senators and House members like Representative Jones have come out and said that this is unconstitutional, that it violates the Constitution, and that it's a usurpation of our republic, 
than an impeachable offense. It goes beyond an impeachable offense. It is a treacherous war against our republic. I was reading from the Encyclopedia Britannica earlier on crossing the Rubicon by Julius Caesar, that it was an act of war prescribed in Latin as coup d'etat when he declared that he was over the military forces of the city-state that ruled the empire. That was January 10th, 49 B.C. Now, last year, and I have the date here in the article by Paul Joseph Watson, Obama sent a letter to Congress when they said, you have to get approval, and he said, I do, you can read it, you can read the letter, link to it right here. On Infowars.com, on WhiteHouse.gov, he said, I don't need congressional approval. You don't have authority over the presidency. I get my authority from the United Nations. And members of the House sued him over it, 10 members. This is a coup d'etat. And the brass came in and the Secretary of Defense came in. And they said international permission is where we get our authority. They didn't just say the president is a dictator. They didn't just say that. They said we get it from the United Nations. Now I want to hear from active duty, National Guard, Marines, Army, but I really want to hear from officers. And by the way, I'm online on big news sites that are starting to report this, where they're like, oh, there's a battle between Congress and the President. It's a political debate about who runs the military. If there's no debate, and I'm seeing the comments going, I'm an Army officer, I'm an Army captain, I'm a Marine Corps colonel, and I'm I'm telling you, this is illegal. Let me read to you what Congressman Jones said. And we're going to go to Paul Watson and then the military calling in. The toll-free number for active duty. What do you think we should do about this? This is an open coup against America, like we're some third-world country. But it's a bunch of lawyers going, oh, uh, it's not the military seizing the Congress. They just walk in and say, oh, uh, we now just do whatever the U.N. says in NATO. And, and the senator's like, I, I'm having trouble catching my breath. I mean, I mean the senators are actually going, huh? Because it's uh, because they know these wars were launched last year without approval. That's illegal and treason. But but now they're being told it's for the UN, and they're going, huh? I, I, let me catch my breath here because, because I, I was watching this this morning. I didn't see this last night, and I had trouble talking. And I guess for the average American that only cares about whatever football game or basketball game's on, I guess I am bad because I'm like, oh, you don't want the U.N. running the military? It's no big deal. I've been to so many urban warfare drills where they've got our troops trained with foreign troops for operations here in America, and now they admit they'll use troops from 15 nations here, NLE 09 and other documents, to deal with, quote, civil insurrection and political dissonance. FEMA is hiring internment specialist for the U.S., for political dissonance. It's all admitted. And this is like a minor footnote. I've got the New York Times today going, there's a little fight between the, the legislative and executive about who runs wars. No, 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 no. There's not a fight about that. That was settled when the country was founded. It's Congress. This is beyond that. They're saying the U.N. and NATO call the shots. Do you understand? Just like Michael News saying, you know, 15 years ago, why am I under U.N. command over here? Why is a U.N. officer commanding me? It was fundamental. People are like, oh, whatever, let the U.N. command you. Now you see where it leads, and everything they've done is to get us ready for this. Folks, if they can do this, they can do anything. Have you not? Uh, that's why courts are ruling they can come in your house without warrants, download your cell phone without warrants. I mean, it's all happening. The toll-free number to join us for military personnel out there. I want to hear what you have to say to this. I mean, you've got to speak out. You've got to write letters. You've got to shoot YouTube videos. You've got to go public. You've got to march. Your country is under attack from within. Enemies foreign and domestic. Our republic is openly, they're declaring it. It already happened, but now they're declaring the U.N. gives the president orders. Go read the quotes on Infowars.com. Go watch the video. I'm going to play it after I take calls. <sighs> Breaking news, Representative Jones puts Obama on notice. Walter Jones, Congress, North Carolina, 3rd District.
in the House of Representatives. This is from his website. Mr. Jones submitted the following concurrent resolution, which was referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. In fact, guys, di dig this bill up for me. Chris has got it. Put it on screen for folks. It's the 112th Congress, 2011-2012, h.con.res.107ih. This is like defibrillators on the heart of the republic. It's in cardiac arrest. Bzz, get them in there. The military speaking out. That's your duty. The republic, the constitution is being openly stomped and, 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 and desecrated in front of you. You've got to say no. This is it. And the reason we speak out now, we've known this has been happening for a while, but now it's so brazen, it's actually got Congress out of their coma for five seconds. Now, let me read to you what Congressman Walter Jones said. I think he was on a few years ago. Concurrent resolution expressing the sense of the Congress that the use of offensive military force by the president without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitute an impeachable high crime. High crime, folks. You know what a high crime is? You know what they do with a high crime? You know what they do for treason? This is from the House member. Hope his plane doesn't blow up. Hope he doesn't slip on a banana peel. We've all got to stand up together. I'm doing it. Jones is doing it. Is it only the Joneses around here and the Pauls around here that are men? Where are you, military? Where are you when the country is going to hell in a handbasket? You better believe I'm risking my life right now. Expressing the sense of the Congress that the use of offensive military force by a president without prior and clear authorization of an act of congression of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution. Whereas all these military, I see debating on the sites whether or not that they can do this. This isn't even about the president launching an attack if we're hit. Congress has given them that authority so they don't have to call Congress in. And people said that was dangerous. See where it leads. This is the president saying, I follow the U.N. and NATO. Okay? In fact, Jones doesn't even get it. It's worse than that. It's a foreign coup d'etat. That's why the president isn't allowed to do this stuff, because they could get an agent in. And they have. Oh, man. Whereas the cornerstone of the republic is honoring Congress's exclusive power to declare war, the cornerstone of the republic. That's right. The cornerstone of the republic. I'm going to say that again. The cornerstone. Founding fathers said that. And I'm reading military brass debating whether Obama can do this. How brainwashed. All you got to do is go read the Constitution, dummy, that you swore an oath to. The good news is most of the military is awake. Nine out of ten comments from the military I'm reading are just like totally awake. Whereas the cornerstone of the republic is honoring Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11. Let me say that to the military again. The cornerstone of the republic is honoring Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives, this Senate concurring. The Senate has now concurred with this. Okay, there's a Senate bill. Senate's on board. This is the sense of Congress that except in response to an actual or imminent attack, that's, that's ICBMs coming in, against the territory of the United States, the use of offensive military force by a president without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress violates Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution, whereas constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution. And it goes on. No debating. No debating. No, no, no. There is no discussion. This is high treason and beyond. This is treachery. Because you can argue it's not treason if you're really a foreign agent. It's espionage. Obama, Panetta, the brass that goes along with this are all guilty of espionage by the corporate crime syndicate mafia known as the New World Order. And I've had it. I want our republic back. If they get away with this, what do you think's next? Secret arrest of citizens, shutdown of free speech, all of it, and all the bondage that comes with it. And I've sworn on the altar of God, eternal resistance to these people. You're like, why are you getting upset? You men get upset for these times, not for going to some football game and getting angry. I'm skipping this break because i got a bunch of military officers and others calling in right now.
All right, let's go to the military calls here. We've got uh, Sergeant in the National Guard, Dante. We've got TJ, retired officer military. We've got Nathan, North Carolina, current Marine. We got Zachary, current National Guard. We've got others coming in. Uh, military, current officers especially, but former officers to give your constitutional fact or statement. Uh, current people, what are you going to do? I, I mean, I'm, I'm here saying call Congress. I, I'm here telling the military stand up and just speak out. I mean, this is brazenly illegal. Who do we go to first here? Um, who's been holding the longest? Let's go to Nathan, who's a current Marine. Uh, Nathan, what is your take on this? Or are you as concerned as I am, or, or is it good to have the U.N. openly telling Congress it doesn't matter? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, my God, Alex, this is so crazy. I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you 100% that I, I had hoped this day wouldn't come. I've been following you for about a year now, and every day it just gets worse, you know, to the point I've stopped watching every day because it, it's scary almost. I've been watching about once a week on the show and, and stuff like that, and it's, it's terrible. And um, I, I feel uh, really small. There's not much I can do, you know. I tell everybody I can, but other than that, there's really not much else I can do. And I hope, like you said, that... Um, that it turns around or else this is going to get bad really quick. Why do you think they would have Panetta and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Chairman come in and over and over again say, no, the U.N. gives us the authority for war? I mean, you could debate the president. Obviously, that's illegal. But now they're saying the U.N. and NATO? I mean, this is incredible. This, this is really scary, Alex. Like, um, when Libya happened, I, you know, I was all over that. Like, you know, obviously that's illegal, you know, it's, uh, you got Obama got the, the Nobel Prize for Peace for that. Can you believe that? Anyways, um, it's, yeah. It's six, it's, sir. Well, so you're a current Marine. Are other Marines concerned? Um, a few of them, yeah. It, uh, it's, it's not something you can really talk about um, unless you're behind closed doors here. But, yeah, I have a few supporters. But, I mean, I mean, what if the president says start taking the guns? There's a point you're going to have to speak up. I mean, look, if the president says he gets his orders from the U.N., is your, is your chain of command the United Nations soldier? That's what I'm asking you, Maureen. I will not ever fire an American citizen. I, I will never do that. If the order ever comes, I'm gone. I will not. But, but I mean, that's order. the point we're at here, where they're saying the U.N. gives the president his orders, when it's the Congress gives him his orders. I appreciate your call. Look, it's time to start bare minimum blacking out your face, you know, in shadow and doing YouTubes and talking about it. But, I mean, what are they going to do to you if you publicly say the president gets his orders from the U.N.? I mean, you can't follow his orders. He's an open foreign espionage asset. It's a coup. Those aren't words, man. This is happening. The senators couldn't breathe. They were, oh, I'm having trouble breathing. I mean, this is this is this is hardcore. Let's go to uh, TJ, retired officer, and I'll go to current military. TJ, your take on this? Alex Emery is TJ, and I'm retired Army Staff Sergeant, not an officer, but I've been an embassy liaison. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's what it said on my computer screen. Go ahead, sir. Okay, you're a great signal corps. You are the Signal Corps officer, but we can't win this without combat arms. That's armor, infantry, air defense. When we get these spray planes out of our sky, when we meet at every meeting in bellicose fashion, face-to-face -face with the county commissioners, et cetera, et cetera, and remember this, UN says on, and they are done and on, and I'll be fighting them on the 27th of March in a formal meeting and I hope I got friends with me but you got to have more in a signal corps you got to have combat arms when That's right. people Lord, have to be on the ground in the info war as Paul Revere is everywhere pointing out the open traders the traders are trying to hide it in plain view more calls straight ahead stay with us Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central we're here live and then I got a big incredibly important nightly news this evening they're launching a new propaganda effort to launch a full invasion of Central Africa and other areas. We're going to be breaking that down in some State Department propaganda we've discovered. We'll also be going more over this. But, you know, we can't get the military calls in.
because nine out of ten are people saying, well, I'm not military, I'm not current military, but I got a point I want to make. Folks, I'm going to institute full call screening if people just don't have basic respect here. You know, I'm, our country is in a deep crisis. I want to talk to current serving military and ask them if they're going to follow illegal orders and if they realize how treasonous this is to have a coup d'etat with the Secretary of Defense, the President, the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying they take their orders from the UN and NATO. I need to hear from them. I need to hear what the military is saying. And the phone systems, of course, when we give the number out, just, just blast with literally hundreds of calls a minute. And I, I'm not trying to be mad at people. I'm glad you want to call in and say something. We can do that after we talk to the military. But don't call right now if you're not active with the military because they can't get into the show. 800-259-9231. Of course, no one will listen to me. They'll just be hung up on, though, folks. So knock yourselves out. Uh, we've got uh, Sergeant National Guard and another National Guard, Zachary. And if anybody can get in, I know I always get calls from troops in Afghanistan and Iraq and at bases. I want to hear from you. Uh, let's go to uh, Zachary, and then we'll go to Dante. Zachary, uh, you're on the air. Uh, what's your take on the publicly announced coup d'etat hidden in plain view of the U.N. and NATO over America? It's uh, a pretty sad day for the, the Republic uh, there, Mr. Jones. But uh, I have a book that I got from, uh, it's the Soldier's Handbook. Well, I was at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, trade Oc pamphlet 600-4, 1 October 2003. And it says, loyalty, bear true faith and allegiance to the U.S. Constitution, the Army, your unit, and other soldiers. It goes on to say, to be loyal is to be unswerving in allegiance to the Constitution and completely faithful to the lawful government. Our absolute allegiance and faithfulness prevents us from misplacing our loyalties. And that was 2-2, uh, two -two, the next page, 2-3. A loyal individual does the following, respects the Constitution and laws, and it goes on. But the next page, there's a quote uh, for all uh, military members calling in. It says, duty, fulfill your obligations. This is uh, page 2-5. There's a quote from General John A. Wickham, uh, former Army Chief of Staff. He says, the essence of duty is acting in the absence of orders or direction from others based on an inner sense of what is morally and professionally right. And it goes on uh, from that quote, duty delineates the sum total of all laws, rules, etc., that make up our organizational, civic, and moral obligations. Our values originate with duty because, at a minimum, we expect all members of the Army to fulfill their obligations. We often expect individuals to exceed their duty, especially in ethical matters. And uh, this certainly is uh, an ethical matter. Well, let me back uh, back up. You know, that's from eight nine years ago. I've this seen was, uh, 2003. Yes. Yeah, I've seen and, and read on air stuff from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, where it's if a president ever tries to use you domestically, they are a traitor and a tyrant. Uh, Congress is in control of the military. The president, only commander in chief, once given a duly, you know, sworn bill of war, declaration of war. And so even what you're reading is is okay, but nothing compared to the Constitution itself. Did you hear me earlier when I read from the Constitution where a president launching a uh, military operation without full congressional authorization is engaged in a high crime and misdemeanor? I, I mean, though the Constitution tells you what it is, but, but look, it's bad enough to have a president saying, I do what I want militarily, again. This is them saying the U.N. is the authority and NATO. I mean, what that may, the president's saying that in the chain of command, see, until about 50 years ago, they taught, until about the Korean War, actually, they taught Congress is at the top of chain of command, then the president, then down to you. Since then, well, the president during a war, then they kind of blurred that. And then now, well, we get authorizations, not declarations. And then now they're saying, listen, Congress, Congress is like, but we are who gives you the authorization, correct? And the sec def says, no, the U.N. I'm going to play it here in a minute. But, I mean, what do you make of that? If that is just, that is off the charts right there. I mean, just because it's the U.N. or NATO, how about saying Russia gives them the orders? Or China? Uh, or, 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 you know, Martians for that matter. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? This is globalism. This is world government. This is a global government coup in our face, sir. Absolutely, and uh, as Mayor Amschel Rothschild said, uh, 
give me the power to coin a nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. And, of course, one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto is for a private central bank. The whole system is corrupt. Knowledge is power, power corrupts, and absolute power, power corrupts absolutely. And if that is true, and I, I'm certain it is, then the media would never tell us the whole truth to anything because we might start to understand the true nature of our predicament. And thanks to you and your show and all the guests that you have on, we, we understand that humanity is under attack and the whole bioethicist, eugenicist thing that you're talking about, hey, they've used the troops to test vaccines on us. There have been soldiers that uh, were, had the full barrage of vaccinations over in Desert, uh, Desert Storm, you know, that, that never went over. But yet uh, they came down with the same Gulf War syndrome as soldiers who went over. Oh, it's we on record. Listen, and they lie to you and say, you don't have any rights. We're going to test experimental shots on you. They can only make you take totally approved vaccines. And there's only about 15 or so that are on the FDA recommended list. So when they test all this dengue fever and this and that and smallpox, anthrax shots, but it killed so many people. So many people dropped dead from the shots. They had to suspend both of those. But let me ask you this question. You're a sergeant in the National Guard. Obviously, you've got to know uh, and, 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 and you're calling in. Um, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from, from Maine. Okay, so you're calling in from Maine. All I know is around here they're having National Guard do checkpoints and show up at events to acclimate us. I mean, are you guys getting more riot control? Are you seeing evidence of them gearing you up for domestic operations? Uh, well, I, I can't really speak uh, too much for that. I've, I've worked crowd control at a naval base for an air show, but uh, that's... Yeah, that's one thing I on a base is fine, yeah. But, I mean, you see like Army Times saying they're going to use the military domestically against citizens, right? Oh, I've read it. I've, I keep up to date with the stuff that you post, and uh, certainly it was concerning seeing that uh, kite festival that you posted there. And uh, Yeah, here in have... Austin, l l let me ask you this. Are the people in the military around you, in the, in the Army, National Guard, are they starting to realize something's not right? Well, yeah, there definitely is a, a vibe there. There's certainly some of us that are more awake than others and uh, certainly have questioned for quite some time now the official... Uh, myth of September 11th and uh, what went down on that day and uh, it's uh, pretty obvious we're being lied to and uh, I commend all the work that you've done and the people that are speaking out to bring justice to, to what happened and and thank you for bringing that Syria blogger on the other day it was uh, it was uh, great to listen to her and her perspective and uh, let me ask you this question Zachary in closing we'll go to others and I again appreciate you taking the time out to call what should the military do? I mean, if I was in the military, especially an officer, because you've got more responsibilities, as you know, to duty than just enlisted, and I've sworn an oath to protect the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic, and the cornerstone of treason is a president declaring he controls the military and can do whatever he wants. And then it goes beyond that saying foreign power is controlling, which is even worse if it's possible. Uh, I mean, what country's ever had a president or leader that's an actual foreign agent? That's it's one thing to have your own dictator, but then the then the dict, you know, person taking on despotic powers is a foreign agent and says so to their bosses in the Congress uh, when it comes to military matters. You know, you don't give the president the power of the military unilaterally because you can't be trusted with it. You've got to share that and have checks and balances. I mean, it, it's just it is. It is the worst case of out in the open treason I can imagine, and it's flaunted openly. And the New York Times has a little footnote about, oh, there's a little fight between the legislative and executive about who runs things. It's like, oh, the you know price of tea in China discussion, like it's no big deal. And then it, oh man, it, it it's exhausting me mentally. Oh yeah, it is. It is exhausting. But uh, to answer your question there, about you know, ideally what, what should be done is the example that was set uh, a couple of weeks ago in Afghanistan with the Quran board burning. You had all those people in the streets, you know, protesting and, and voicing their, uh, you know, concerns over that. And uh, if the, it would never happen, but if people dressed in uniform, went down to the federal buildings or wherever and had signs in uniforms and said it's treason, you know, have the quotes from, from, from the guy there, Panetta. You know, uh, we don't answer to the U.N. You know, if we get on the streets in mass and just said, hey, we've had enough, we're not doing it. Well, I'll tell you where the digital streets are, YouTube, uh, letters to the editor. And, and then if they try to go after somebody, you've got congressmen coming out saying it's a high crime. And you're like, look, 
my, my so-called commander-in-chief, who's not your commander-in-chief because there's no declared war, is telling me he gets orders from the U.N. The U.N. and NATO is not in my chain of command. It doesn't command America. God bless you. I appreciate you calling. I mean, we've got, now that the gauntlet's down, I mean, they're not hiding this. And they're saying the U.N. runs America. And that Congress doesn't count. I mean, come on. Congress and the House and Senate have finally introduced legislation saying we, we might impeach you. You've got to do that. I mean, even that corrupt body knows this. This is, this is incredible. Can you imagine the Russians, as corrupt as their government is, coming out, a Russian president, and saying uh, to the Duma, to their Congress, uh, I'm going to launch a war in, say, Georgia or Chechnya or Ukraine or against Poland. And the Duma says, well, you didn't get authorization from us. And they say, oh, but I got it from the USA. Or I got it from China. Or I got it from Bangladesh. I mean, it would be instantly the, there'd be an outcry from the Russians. They'd be in the streets. The military would outcry. They, 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 would, they would arrest Putin like, like that. Just boom, he'd be arrested or his helicopter would blow up. That's how the Russians do it. He would die. Alexander Lebed was caught sneaking around working with the West and his helicopter blew up. But again, we're not dealing with puppet presidents here. Obama is just a little corporate whore, New World Order lawyer. It's a bunch of lawyers, man. And they create these international bodies and have traitors sign over. Like a lawyer stealing your portfolio, or you got a trust and the lawyer signs your house over themselves. That happens all the time. That's what they've done. They just sign America over and sit there arrogantly like the pigs they are in front of Congress. And, and the Congress is like, well, we know we're just little sellout criminals that you've got blackmailed for inside our trading, but don't publicly announce we don't run anything now. That's embarrassing. I want to feel powerful at the country club today playing golf. Then it's like, yeah, you don't run jack squat, pal. I haven't even gotten to the video yet. It's at Infowars.com. I'm exhausted now. I don't know how I'm into the nightly news. I'm, I'm beyond angry. It is just, it's ridiculous. It's like, it'd be like if you're walking down the street and they had babies out live hanging by their feet and, and were saying, hey, you want some fresh meat? And they were chopping babies up like fish with, with big meat cleavers. And everybody's just walking by with shopping bags going up and it's being wrapped in white paper. I mean, it's that crazy. And everybody just goes along with their business like, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, Secretary of Defense, Obama, all of them say the U.N. tell us what to do. It's, it's nothing. And it's like England. Eighty-plus percent of their laws are now made by foreign EU, which isn't even the EU countries. That's made by the bureaucracy. And the EU countries are being told now, foreign banks run us, and you have no national sovereignty. And the military and police are following orders, and NATO controls Europe and says they're the world army now. It's the global government army, and our army is part of it. And those generals sit there getting off on it and showing satisfaction when Panetta tells them, we take our orders from NATO and the UN. And I'm watching the generals, and I'm watching their adjuncts behind them, and their minions, and they all look like Cheshire cats, so satisfied... Oh, man, these people are traitors. I mean, and I don't just use that word. These are enemies of our country. <laughs> I'm getting a headache. Dante, sergeant in the National Guard. Sir, what is your take on this? I mean, am I wrong? or Is, uh, is it good to have the Secretary of Defense and Obama announce we follow the U.N.? They're our boss now. Well, I guess if you're if you're following the Communist Manifesto, that'd be a good thing to have, Alex. But um, for the rest of us over here that actually value our liberty and our freedoms and actually try to stand up to that type of tyranny, it's not a good thing at all. But I've actually been um, I've been following the show since I was about 15 years old. I'm 21 now, and I've held public screenings, I've held public viewings, I've spoken to my soldiers, the people in my direct chain of command, and for the most part, outside of the people in my direct community where I rest my head at, it's like a joke to a lot of the people in my unit. They're just like, okay, haha, ha, I'm going to go home and go to sleep now. You know, it's okay because it's the president. He knows what he's doing. If you don't trust him, you should get out of the military. Well, I'm not in the military, 
for the commander and the chief. I'm in the military to defend my country. As, as you know, that's just why I joined. Oh yeah, the Germans. The, there was a debate in Germany about no, you're supposed to follow the, the Constitution, the Weimar Republic, the Reichstag, and then Hitler had them all change the oath to him. And so I guess that's what they. Wow. So you're saying they're ready to do it? They're ready to do whatever they're told. I mean, here in Jersey, there's there's different units. Um, my unit in particular. Let's say out of 100,000 guys, let's just use that number, out of 100,000, about 75,000 would probably just stand there and do what they're told because, you know, their mentality is, okay, whatever, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go home. And I'm looking at these guys like, what are you going to do when the areas that are being targeted and the people that are being groped and the weapons that are being taken are yours? What are you going to do then? And they're looking at me like, oh, this guy's a nut. It'll never happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm already under surveillance as it is, Alex. My first tour to Iraq was in 08, 09. You know, I was under surveillance for listening to the Alex Jones show overseas. Just because I'm Muslim, they thought I was going to do something crazy. I came back. Now I'm about to go over to Afghanistan again to put my life on the line for the bull, the bull mess. And I'm under surveillance again. I get followed home sometimes. My roommate's been followed home sometimes. My girlfriend, you know, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous, Alex. And, and I'm not going to stand for it. I dare somebody to tell me to turn a weapon on an innocent U.S. citizen or start confiscating weapons. Especially in a state where you have to go through six or seven seven month trials to be able to carry a, per, a, a weapon with a permit or even purchase a rifle or a shotgun to go hunting. So I wish somebody would. Well, God bless you. And I appreciate your call. That's, that's a, a, a sad testament that 70 plus percent think everything's a joke, but remember it's always the minority, the three to 5% that says no to tyranny. All I know is that They're not announcing this to the Senate for no reason. Everything is thought out by Panetta and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The fact that they would march in there in front of their bosses, our representatives that work for us, we're at the top of the pyramid in this country, then the Congress, then the President, then the courts. The fact that they would do that, the fact that they... It, it, it just shows that they're getting ready to pull the trigger on some big stuff. There is some good news. In the House and Senate, legislation has been introduced by Republicans and Democrats to begin the process of impeachment against Barack Hussein, the traitor Obama. I would just change the song to say, preemptive war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. You lose the moral authority. And you become the enemy. You know, again, this is not our government. It's illegitimate. But it dresses like us. It acts like us. That's why Cicero, you guys reprint me the full Cicero quote on the traitor. Cicero, the traitor is the plague. That'll, that'll bring it up. Roman uh, philosopher, historian. The traitor knows how to dress like you, talk like you, talk like us. And that's all this is, is treason by lawyers. And again, I'm going to play it in the next hour. The video is up at InfoWars.com, the audio, the transcript. I've read from it. Members of Congress in the House and Senate have introduced legislation, putting him on notice of moves for impeachment. If the president won't just say, yes, Congress gives me the authority to launch wars, but Obama wouldn't say it last year. And I was like, wow, that's big. And now he's saying it again to their faces. That's putting them on notice. That's a legal precedent. And it is, by every historical measurement, a coup against the republic. A coup by a dictator if Obama tried it. But it's a foreign coup. Here's the Daily Mail. I won't follow Obama's unlawful orders. Marine could be disciplined over Facebook outbursts. The Marine Corps is looking into whether Sergeant Gary Stein broke military rules when he declared on Facebook that he would not follow orders from the Commander-in-Chief, President Obama. Paul Stein softened his statement on the Armed Forces Tea Party Patriot page to say that he would not follow unlawful orders. Military observers say he may have gone too far. It's all part of discipline. And what did he specifically say he wouldn't follow? See, they don't even want you to know in here what it is that he said. Is he even talking about this? Let them start trying to discipline people that say they won't follow orders from the U.N. He says, Armed Forces, Tea Party, and myself has gone and rubbed some people the wrong way with the Marine Corps. 
someone is mad because of a comment I stated Obama was a domestic enemy of our oath speaks of. It was not meant to be disrespectful towards the president. Well, he's not our president. He is a globalist operative. Although we do believe that his policies are crippling this country. So this is, I'm sure this is to do with energy or something like that. Again, that's a complete side issue. Thank you, guys. Now, that's a complete side issue that Dude brought in here, but I'm glad he did bring it in. Obama is a nothing puppet. All right, I see that we have um, Martinez, who's a Marine. We have Mike in New York, uh, who's U.S. Army. We haven't talked to regular Army yet. It's been a bunch of National Guard. Dustin in Texas, who's Army. Private J, National Guard. Some other Marines and people. I'm going to get to all of you. We have some good news. You know, the video's got about a million views right now. Breaking down, all the scanners are totally fake. You can carry bombs in them, everything. The TSA had the video blocked, but due to outrage, uh, it was unblocked this morning. The uh, TSA is making fun of the American citizens on their blog right now. TSA mocks viral videos, says, able to detect threats such as, you know, things that go boom. Talking to us at a three-year-old level, they do that on purpose to dumb the language down. It's all part of their psych warfare attack on free humanity. Let's go back to military calls, because it's the military. I should ask police. I mean, I guess you'll follow any order. The feds are federalizing everything. I confirm there's now TSA inspectors at all the police departments and on the streets. They're the boss. Everyone's like, the federal inspector's coming. They tell us what to do. Because they're unbonded, unsworn, not even federal agents. I mean, it's like, and 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 the UN orders our president around now, and 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 the president tells Congress they have no authority over war now. Just unbelievable treason and a coup d'état. That's what's really happening. Those aren't just words. Martinez in California, welcome and thank you for holding, sir. You're a uh, marine. What's your view on what we've been talking about? Actually, Alex, I'm a woman. <laughs> okay, well, it says Marine there. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yes, I'm a Sergeant United States Marine Corps. I work on Camp Pendleton uh, in Del Mar area. I don't think that this is right at all. It's wrong. It's like everything inside me is screaming what the heck is going on. You know, um, I've been listening to you for a while. My brother actually introduced me to your show, and, uh, you know, I actually do a lot of research, and, you know, I don't think that it's right at all. I mean, people need to wake up, and people need to, well, you know what, actually, I need to tell you this. People who, um, you know, they actually swear in, they're in the military, they don't even research the Constitution. They don't even know that they're supposed to really uphold it. They don't know the the depth of the responsibility that they have to the people to defend them, you know, just in case, like, should something go wrong. And, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to educate my troops on the Constitution and on the Bill of Rights, the rights that they have, you know, the rights that the people have, and that, you know, what's going on isn't right. I mean, you know, some people tell me I should be careful and not to go around talking about all this stuff. Sounds like yeah, what happened in Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia when the military was being told, follow legal orders. Look, it's in the Constitution. As you know, I read the articles earlier. You've got a House and Senate bill telling the president, hey, we can impeach you. Again, it's the Congress that impeaches the president because the founders knew a bigger body of people is harder to take over, and they represent the states. So they've been teaching for 100 years, co-equal legislative, executive, judicial. That was never taught until about 1910 or so. And then it didn't become the dominant theme for the last 20, 30 years. The Congress is above the president. The Congress is above the legislative. They're not co-equal. The, they are the lawmakers and the purse holders, okay? The president executes things. That's it. And the courts look at laws to see if they're constitutional as a check on the Congress and on the president. So I don't know how to explain it. And then, and then the legislative, they approve of the judiciary, so it's a check on them. It's all about checks and balances. But of the three, the dominant is the Congress because it's the most diverse. And I'm going to hold you. I want to come back and talk to you here, and then we'll try to hurry the others that are uh, patiently uh, uh, holding.
No, no. Uh, Mar yeah, uh, she's still there, but one of the people just hung up, so another person's calling in right now. We'll take that call. But I'm going to get to Dustin, Private J, talking to Martinez, a uh, 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 lady in the Marine Corps. Uh, Mike is up next after Martinez. We're going to get to all of you, then Private J and others. But it, it, look, just what she said, the, 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 they do not read it. It's just like, yes, I swear an oath to it. It's there for a reason. Okay, and what the president's done is totally illegal. I want to race through military calls, and then I will actually air excerpts of the high treason, foreign espionage against this country. When you have the president in written letters saying, I don't need Congress to launch wars, I get my authority from the UN, and I take their orders, uh, and I've read the quotes here. When you have the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman agreeing with that and the SecDef, Secretary of Defense, telling the Senate Armed Services Committees and others that, yeah, no, you have no authority, you, you don't matter. That isn't just the president crossing the Rubicon and taking dictatorial powers to himself and having Congress pass laws the president can secretly arrest citizens and kill them, and we know Obama asked for that, and Congress gave it to him. So, of course, the president's like, well, I'll start arresting reporters then for whistleblowing. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just have my Secretary of Defense come in and tell you that you have no authority. And those senators are like, but that's not true. That's illegal. And then it goes, well, that's the way it is. And we're talking to the military, the ones that listen to the show who are good men and women. They're calling in going, yeah, this sounds pretty bad. This sounds like this isn't right. I mean, other people in the military aren't reading the Constitution. Folks, the Constitution is the law. It's America. I mean, I've never heard of a country that wasn't some little third world country where a foreign group of corporations put a puppet president in and then they do things like this. But that's what the New World Order is. They've done it the third world countries. Now they're doing it here. Now, uh, I was talking to Martinez was her name, uh, a Marine sergeant. And she said people are starting to wake up. And I wanted to talk to her more, but she hung up. And I want to thank her for calling in. And uh, thank her for listening to the show, and please keep spreading the word. But I wanted to ask her more questions, but she was on Camp Pendleton, so she might have had to go. Uh, who's been holding the longest? We're going to go to Mike, who's U.S. Army. Then we're going to go to Private J, who's National Guard. Then we're going to go to Dustin, who's U.S. Army. Then John, Joe, and others. Well, we got a lieutenant colonel there. Let me skip to Joe first, because I want to hear from an officer that I promise we're going to get to. We heard from a lieutenant colonel, Anthony Schaefer, three days ago or two days ago, saying it's treason. It's illegal. What already happened in Libya is Congress is suing the president. Why not just start impeaching him? Well, Walter Jones in North Carolina has started it. The Senate's concurred with the legislation. Is it news that the beginning process of impeachment's begun? No, it's not even in the news. Let's hear from that, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Joe in Pennsylvania. What's your view on this, uh, Lieutenant Colonel? Alex, I looked at that uh, testimony this morning, and Secretary of Defense Panetta just made me sick with how he was acting towards uh, Senator Sessions. When I heard that, I, I just couldn't even think straight, because he openly defied him. As that Sessions should have ordered him right there. He says, that's illegal, and you come to Congress, and that's an order. Uh, and we want to see Congress get more involved in this. You know, sure, we'll do our part in the military, but Congress has to get involved. The Supreme Court has to get involved. Uh, and I know we're doing everything we can to talk to our troops and to see what's going to happen if an illegal order is given. I myself have already personally uh, defied several illegal orders in my career, and uh, nothing happened because it was just a, a, a private thing that I did. But getting other men to go along with you, you know, I do our studying on the partisans back in uh, World War II uh, against the Germans, and uh, they most of them ended up getting shot in the head. So it's just not really a simple thing to just say we're going to defy our orders, although I personally would not uh, carry out a, a illegal order. Well, so, well, Colonel, if it was done early on, Hitler would have been defeated. It, it was by successive approximation, as you know, incrementally then getting the military to swear it oath to him not to the republic the weimar republic similar to ours the issue here is it's one thing to say no to a hitler or a stalin because as bad as they were 
they were over their country. They weren't under a foreign power. With Obama, as you they said, NATO and the U.N., as you said, Colonel, they defied. Here's the boss. Here's the senator. I mean, that's, that's who's got the purse. That's who declares war. Here is the chairman of the committee saying, you do know under the Constitution and under the articles that you're under Congress. And they said, no, we're, you know, we're under NATO, we're under the UN, that's where we get our authority. And, and Sessions is like, what? And they kept saying it and saying it. As you know, he was defying him. And uh, Congress has the authority to start arresting these people. I mean, they don't just have the authority to start impeachment. And, and I'm sorry, folks, people are like, arrest them. What are you supposed to do when they come in and say, I take my orders from a foreign group? I, I mean, uh, Colonel, your take on that. I'm involved in uh, recruiting, and I ask every potential recruit whether they would disobey an unlawful order. And every one of them has said yes, but they say, what is, a, what is an unlawful order? And each service has their own courses they give and their own definition of it, so it's very difficult. But the key to me, even during, even during NDAA, we follow this closely. We watch the vote. We watch the way they put in all of the different uh, amendments. And what did Congress do? Virtually nothing. We need Congress to back us up and uh, not just have us be the only ones that are going to try to defy the president or disobey an order. If we could get Congress more fired up, then we, then we we'd be even more apt to go along. And well, Joe, let me be completely clear. You, you've hit the nail on the head here. Okay, you're right. I'm asking the military to speak up because the Congress are a bunch of paid off, blackmailed crooks. Now, this is so brazen that they're freaking out and talking about impeachment. So I'm saying we've got to really push them. And I, quite frankly, I'm looking for sacrificial lambs here. If it's myself, whatever the case is, you know, uh, politically, whatever, I don't want to be hurt, but this is the way it is. Obviously, the only way to supercharge this is for the military to simply, if, if I was a colonel, I would go to my commanding officer and say, well, here's Congressman Walter Jones reading the Constitution, um, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11, that it is a high crime and misdemeanor for the president uh, to launch military actions without congressional approval. And then they go through all that. And... And, and then I'd say it goes further, uh, Colonel or General, whoever is above you. It goes further. As you know, they're saying the authority comes from the U.N. in these statements. Uh, what is your position on that? And because we've got to head this off at the pass. I mean, there's nothing wrong with reading the Constitution and saying my commander in chief is not under the command of the U.N. The president, you know, it, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. One of the things that I did early on was I refused to salute the United Nations flag, and I also refused to salute uh, Henry Kissinger when he was Secretary of State. But, but besides that, I've called my congressman in my own district where uh, my home is, and I've asked for him to put in writing that he supports Congressman uh, Dick Jones' resolution. I've already found out that it's a bipartisan effort to co-sign that, they're going to try to move that as quickly and as possible, and I'm getting hundreds of copies of that. I'm going to be passing that out to every military Good. member I get my hands on. Good. Beautiful. And, and, and you're absolutely right that it's their job and the American people's job. I, I'm not, it's just that in every case, like with the fall of East Germany or any of it, it ends up being the military that is going to make the decision if they go into hot tyranny on whether they succeed or not. And, and, and I mean in, in succeed in launching the civil war, which the globalists have been making plans for, as you know. We don't want to be in a civil war with the military and police. I've seen enough in my life to not be macho and to want to have this fight. But you know the fight is going to come, and it's a mindless fight. We need to, to work with the military and police now to overt this. I mean, I knew, Colonel, when I went to urban warfare drills 14, 15 years ago, that's when the scales came off my eyes. And I witnessed mainly the Marines, in most cases, training to occupy U.S. cities and confiscate firearms of citizens. And I will tell the military, if they try widespread gun confiscation, it will result in absolute anarchy and huge casualties on both sides. And I know the military is having that discussion. I mean, I, 
do you do you have confidence that the military, even with some ridiculous scenario, you know that they push, uh, will say no to gun confiscation? I can say speak for myself that I would not uh, author my authorize my men to go and to do it. But uh, I just hope that they're not going to be some of these uh, knuckle draggers, as you call them. They just uh, enjoy that kind of thing and don't even think of the consequences of it or the constitutionality of it. Uh, you know, these idiots like Mark Levin, I used to listen to him until he started every day pounding on Ron Paul, and he's he's just uh, a spokesperson for who knows what in this civil organization. They, they can bring things before Congress, but they're always bringing some stupid bill that means nothing. Let's get them behind all of this, and let's get to the Supreme Court. Why is it so hard to bring a bill to the Supreme Court and decide if something's unconstitutional or not? I hear you. God bless you, Colonel. Stay in touch. Really good points. I know I talked to a lot of military, including Brass, who's upset and concerned, and I know a bunch of the last Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Chairman, the last two rounds, they kept saying no to all this, and, and no to Bush. Obama, because he's, quote, liberal, has gotten so much through arresting reporters, charging him, you know, uh, under the Espionage Act for whistleblowers, exposing corruption and bid rigging and crimes and shipping guns into Mexico. All right, Mike in New York, get started. We'll come back to you after the break. Uh, he's U.S. Army. Thanks for holding, Mike. Go ahead. How you doing? How you doing, Alex? It's great to hear from you and stuff like that. I think one of the things, I think Ron Paul could be a great candidate for president of the United States, but I think a lot of people in the black communities and Latino communities don't really know who Ron Paul is. I think they think he's a racist, which we know, we all know it's not true, but they don't really know he sticks up for the Constitution, that he helps everyone. I think people, because when I talk to other soldiers and stuff like that, they, black people and stuff, they think Ron Paul is a racist because the media hardly talks about it. If they do talk about sure, it, sure, sure, but, but, but specifically on the Ron Paul front, um, yeah, just because politicians promote and say they care about some racial group or another, that's all talk. The Constitution is what everybody gets. I mean, we had a call yesterday point out, I'm not bashing women here, but the court systems are geared towards women and against men in family rights. There's all sorts of discrimination out there that isn't about religion or race. Most of it's economic. You know what? Stay there. I want to come back to get your take, though, as a military person on this. Because this is the big enchilada. This is a foreign coup. Do you hear me? Right, let's hurry to your calls now because I've got to actually get to the audio and video of the treason, of the foreign coup in front of everyone. And then all this other news I haven't even gotten to yet. But uh, finishing up with Mike in New York is U.S. Army. I understand you bringing up Ron Paul. But, but shifting into what we're discussing here, what do you think of... The president, the sec def, all of them saying, not just that the president is a dictator, basically, but that he takes his orders from foreign powers. What's your view on that? I think it's a shame. I think it's terrible. Is he, is he not really our president? Because you're supposed to uphold, defend, uphold the Constitution. That's your job. Your job is not to work for the U.N. or NATO or anybody else or, or J.P. Morgan or the Rothschilds or anybody else. Your job is to uphold and defend the Constitution. That's the right. Has not done that. That's right, and we're so trained to think of a foreign power, you know, some dictator like Mussolini that we're fighting. It's you know, it's banks, it's these mega corporations that that. Uh, God bless you. I appreciate your call. We have got to tell Congress. In fact, this is my message that I'm going to give them today. I'm going to call them myself today. Not that it's superpower that I call them. It's just that uh, I don't just talk the talk. I walk the walk. When I call them, I'm going to say, "Listen, this is treason. It's a foreign coup." Openly announced, it's illegal, and anybody that doesn't sign on to the bill to start the impeachment process is aiding and abetting. If somebody robs a bank, and they're coming along through your farm, and you say, hey, come on in here, stay, stay with me, just give me some of the money, you're now just as guilty of aiding and abetting as the guy that robbed the bank. You are guilty. So you better choose what side you're on. This isn't going to go like Germany, where... The authoritarians win. Let me tell you something. We're going to stop the New World Order. They're going to go a lot further before it implodes, but we're going to beat them.